Greetings. Hit my mic already. Awesome. Um, this video is going to be more or less the start of some JavaScript uh, exploration because I made a video a while back that just literally was called I suck at JavaScript and it's pretty much true. I've always struggled with the language and I feel until you actually get your hands dirty do you realize how you can apply it and one thing that's helped me so much is on top of like some courses, which I can link to is just kind of digging into the API within the browser and seeing where some of these actual method names and terminologies exist. So like if you're capturing an event, for example, you might want to like, you know, reference something around that element as opposed to just it. And you can do that in modern browsers. So it's pretty neat to see. Um, and JavaScript's one of those things that works anywhere, so it's kind of a language that a lot of people would advocate to learn. So, in this video is going to be the focus of dropdowns, and I figured I'd apply practical examples because this is stuff I'm doing every day. It's stuff that I would always reach for in terms of like a framework or CSS stack plus JavaScript, like your bootstraps or Bulma stuff or other things that I've used in other videos, but I wanted to roll my own today and kind of just give you the idea that it is possible and it's not really that over your head um, from a front end developer standpoint. If you struggle with JavaScript, hopefully this helps you. It's kind of an exercise for me just to teach you so I can help teach myself more. So. If it's kind of long, mundane, sorry. Um, there is some styles th that are involved that are going to make this truly possible. So a lot of this might be sped up in terms of CSS uh, because it's not really the focus, but um, there might be some copy and pasting with that going on. But if you really want to see the full spectrum of things, you can uh, view the GitHub repo. I'll link this too. So that will have everything outlined and you can just kind of plug and play and see what you can do on your own. See if you can create similar effect. Um, without further ado, the header in mention is going to be like something I've been toying with during the day, creating an actual uh, DIY menu navigation. And I wanted to create something I've seen on bootstrap where they have like links, they have drop downs, some are left aligned, some are right. Uh, we're using Flexbox with CSS to make this thing really kind of float left and right, but not use actual floats because floats are kind of tricky to work around. And if you don't need to use them, I wouldn't use them. I'm using a Gravatar for my avatar, uh, but it is a drop down as well. And there's a little hover element. Um, and then there's another theme to this header that just by changing a class in my code, let's go to the actual index HTML. So there's a header dark that I applied. I want to just add light just to show you by example, the difference here. So now we have a light version just from, you know, changing a simple class name. And yeah, so that's what I want to build in this video. And to get started, I'll actually reference some older code for a gulp file. I like to pre-process my own SAS. If you want to follow along and not do all this setup, you can totally do it in like code pen or something. And that stuff will just basically do what we're doing here, maybe with a few discrepancies. Um, but this stuff I'll probably copy and paste over simply because it's not the focus. Uh, but you can also reference this um, in the repo as well if you want to copy this and use it in your own projects. Using Gulp and Yarn primarily, but it uses uh, Node, so you'll need that. So make sure you have that. And then um, all of these dependencies, which we'll get into. So I'll go ahead and start. I have this already created, but I'll do another um, actual folder in my sites directory. Um, you see I have a server and everything running here. So I'm gonna kill that. I'll CD back out. I'll just go to my basic web crunch directory and just create um, DIY drop downs. Uh, we'll say demo. And then we can CD into that DIY drop downs demo. So there's going to be some, some setup involved. And that's just kind of the reality of running this locally and not on CodePen or something. 
Um, so to use gulp in those things, you need node. So to get going, I want to add, I already have yarn installed. If you don't, you can do yarn and go and download that. Um, we'll do a yarn in it. And it'll kind of just give you a series of questions to ask you about your project. I'll just kind of default through these quick DIY approach to drop downs and navigation. Uh, we'll, we're going to have an index HTML file. I'll skip that for now and come back. I'll just add my name. Can you spell my name? There we go. And MIT. Uh, cool. So that's there. Let's just open this for now. That's all we have, but this is the basis to start off with. So that's great. And we need to set up some initial structure. So I'm going to have an index file for sure. And then I already know because of how I write my gulp file, I am going to have an assets directory with a bunch of stuff in it. Inside that, there'll be an images directory and also a JS directory and also a SAS directory spelled S A S S. And you can tweak the gold file to do whatever you want. Um, it's just basic naming conventions, however you want to use it. So in here, I'll just add a style.scss file, just the root one, and then a folder called shared that's it's going to have an underscore so SAS doesn't compile it down. I think I'm creating a folder. Yeah. And inside that, we'll have all of our partials of which I like to segment so you can componentize styles that you would normally not use or use together. Um, typical, I'll segue from there, a typical production app, I am using more and more atomic styles. So rarely do you have just like really targeted CSS anymore. It's more of uh, utility based classes. So each class performs kind of one or two things at max. So you can set that in your HTML and just constantly design almost almost just you know coding. So it's kind of a neat thing um, that I'm really digging right now. I'm not going to do it in this video because that's way better for apps that need to scale. And this one is just a, a example. So uh, I'll keep going here. So I know there's going to be an input and output folder. So one's going to be called dev and one's going to be called dist in my JavaScript directory. Yeah, I'm actually going to make a file in dev called app.js and that's it. Cool. So let's go ahead and set up next our gulp file. Since we have all that done, if you follow along there, sorry if I was fast, the dev, this, this file is going to compile down into this folder and be called app.min.js. So it'll be compressed in all these bells and whistles that are involved with it, then we can link to it in our index HTML, which will happen here soon. And the same is true for SAS. Uh, output will come to the root of the project and it'll just be a style sheet, a traditional style sheet. So we'll go from there and create a gulp file. And I'm going to reference my other project simply because it would take way too long just to, you know, copy this all down on this video. I don't want to waste your time. So I'll walk you through it though. So we still need to install these dependencies, but here you have gulp, gulp SAS, auto prefixer, image min, which we aren't really going to use, but it's nice to have. Um, uh, concat, we can concatenate files, uglify for JavaScript. Gulp watch to watch the project. I like to create source maps. So if I create a bunch of SAS files, you can see where I'm actually targeting a file uh, when it gets compressed using Gulp. Connect is going to be what powers our little local server. And then we have an image uh, source and destination paths as well as JS. And the image applies to this image min, which minifies your images. And JS, it's the same kind of um, concept. So here you see the distribution folder for the JS 
is going to be where it outputs and the dev folder is where it inputs. So anything I add to the dev folder in essence will be compiled down to one file, which is exactly what I want. So with connect, you can use live reload. Um, I have that queued in on my browser, which I might have turned on already. I'm not sure I might need to do that. And then here we have our, our uh, SAS task for gulp. And we're going to basically reference the asset SAS directory, any files within it, any files and folders within it. We're going to create our source map. We're going to pipe it through auto prefixer for the last two versions and cascade falls. It's just kind of a default I set. You can pipe it through the SAS um, plugin as well and output style can be whatever you prefer. You can look that up. And uh, let's see if there's any errors, we'll log those. Our source maps will end up in a maps directory. Like I said, our style sheet will end up in the root directory. And then each time we save a file or, or make a change and save it, the browser should reload. Assuming you have live reload enabled on your browser, you can get it for your extension if you want it. It's free to download. JS is quite similar. We're, we're passing in all of our input. Um, I'm passing in just the actual object of input. So here you can create an object with different things to pass in. I just went ahead and explicitly wrote that. Um, and then it's gonna concatenate the files and call it this, which is why I mentioned that before. We're gonna run it through Uglify uh, and then I'll put it to our disk folder and then reload each time we make a change. If we make a change on any HTML files, the, we'll reload the browser. Um, same is true for sat, um, CSS and our JavaScript. And then finally, watch, you can call basically to watch any of these kind of processes going on in the background. And then to finally kick it off, if you just run gulp, which is the default task, instead of, you could run gulp watch, you could run gulp live reload individually, but I like to just run it all at once and start from there. And so then we run each of these at once. One final thing I like to do is add a NPM script, which basically it's kind of just a, an understood way to run stuff all at once if you're using NPM or yarn. Uh, so you can declare it like this in your package.json file. It's called script, should be plural. And we'll do start. So you can call, that's what you'll run. You'll run npm run, and then whatever that key term is. So start in this case, and it's just gonna run gulp. So we could just say gulp and it'll do its thing, but kind of the industry way to do it is this way. So that's all set. And uh, we still need to install our dependencies. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, I'm gonna reference a file just to make sure I download the right ones. I'll have this in my blog so you can copy and paste it. All right, so we're gonna run yarn. I like to use yarn by the way, so you can use NPM if you want, Same, almost the same thing. And then with yarn, you just pass dev to save it as a dev dependency, so that way when you share this repo, you don't actually commit your node modules, but you can share what dependencies you do have, and this is gonna be in our package.json file. So when you share this, the person can just run yarn and it'll install those instead of them having to ask you or go hunt and find. So if this looks good. I think we're good. So I'm gonna run this, give it a second and we'll come back. Okay, so that was pretty quick. Yarn seems to be quicker than NPM. I don't know if I'm accurate in saying that, but that's just what I've noticed. Uh, with that done, we should see our package.json file propagate with these things. And these are dev dependencies since we passed that dev flag. So that's something to know. If you had traditional dependencies, this wouldn't be called this. It would just be called dependencies. And the project would need that no matter what to start, as opposed to being something you install on dev. One last thing I want to do before I go nuts is create a git ignore file. And it starts with a period. And it looks like my... Oh, it's, there it is. Okay, I just want to pass in node modules 
it's a gigantic folder and I it's insane how much space it takes up and I wish there was something else uh, we wouldn't have to do with that but if you just pass in the folder name here you won't version control it and everyone will thank you for that so that being said we should probably initialize this repo so I'll do get init get and it's gonna you can say get status it'll show you what you added all this stuff cool um, I could probably put the yarn lock file in there too but I'm gonna leave it alone so we'll just do get um, commit M we'll just do in it just to give it some go all right now if all goes right if I run npm zoom in for you npm run start should kick up a browser or it won't kick it up but it'll give you a local host to go to and there we go so we, we don't have our actual code or anything on this page yet so that's up next uh, but our initial setup is done and gulp is working everything's being live reloaded I think I have it running now I do so you make sure you have that extension and any change you make is gonna apply here so let's double check it's working maybe by declaring uh, styles maybe I'll reference my other project just to get the boilerplate up of our like header area like this stuff here and I'll talk about this in a bit so let me get the basics all right cool so we have basic HTML structure um, we're linking to the font family IBM Plex I like it quite a bit so I'm using it on the navigation basically throughout and then our generated style sheet is here now so we had that going since we we're running gold if we make a general I think I made it a body uh, SAS file I might not have but I'll go ahead and make one and we can say body background uh, gray for now and then I need to make sure this is imported body and it should be shared body cool so I'll go back to body and save that and if all goes right we should see some styles there we go okay so I needed to just restart the server there and things are automatically updating now so great um, this is already running over that time amount I wanted to spend on setup but I think I'll go into a new video next and start on the actual scaffolding of the HTML we'll add the CSS and then get into the JavaScript so I'll see you guys in a second